Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is our weekly rundown of events, updates and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation and also Blender Zen app. And this week we do have some very interesting updates and also some community stuff that you guys would like to take a look at. First off, let's talk about Blender. Blender 3.0 is still in its works but then last week we talked about something that Pablo is working on. So if you go over to the download section towards the experimental branch, you would notice that we have the sculpt development branch and the last one which we have is July the 31st which means it is extremely recent and I've gone through to test this out and of course the array tool that Pablo has talked about on his Twitter is right here. So for you to take advantage of this you need to download the alpha version of the sculpting branch which is 3.0 the alpha and then you need to create an object go over to where you have your sculpting and from here you can start doing stuff. Now the array brush is extremely easy to understand for those who are thinking about working with this one and how you can actually start manipulating things is once you go over to the brush panel you would notice that we have a brand new brush so we've seen a couple of other brushes before you know we've probably talked about them but then there is a brand new brush and that is the array brush so if you click on the array right now you can start doing some stuff by default once you just click on the array and you you know start tweaking this nothing happens because within the tool section we haven't set the count of the number of copies we would like to make so in this case if you like to make about let's say let's bring this down let's say we want to make about 32 different copies of course we can so we'll set the deformation type to be linear and then we have it so this way you can start creating things really quick but of course you probably wouldn't want to create linear stuff you want to create things that are even way more interesting and that is why we're going to experiment with radial so with the radial one you can create radial looking you know arrays so you can even make more and more and you can actually go in and even make even way more so depending on you know depending on what you feel comfortable doing so this is something you probably wouldn't achieve in a 10 minutes max if you're making copies by yourself but with a brush like this in less than three clicks you have it ready now it's also what mentioning that this also has a radius unit which either works based on the view or of the scene so right here we have this set to view and that is why once we make a copy from here we can go over to a point like this and make another copy and it takes a look at the view okay and uh, makes this giant ball and of course we can jump right in here and this is quite interesting to look at you can see this beautiful you know stuff right here but then if you like to work with the scene you can also proceed to do that now there's also one more deformation type that we need to explore which is the parts so with the part one you can actually create parts with this so we can click and make parts and then we can also make more parts and this way you can make those crazy looking things and uh, depending on what you like to make as well you can even do some more stuff with this so i kind of noticed that there might be a little bit of a uh, collision happening but it's not so obvious but then let's see what pablo would come up with at the end of the day with a tool like this so pretty nice stuff from pablo and of course if you like to experiment with this one and maybe you want to make some very interesting and mesmerizing piece then i recommend for you to take a look at this something else that is currently in production is cycles x and you can actually proceed to see that as well as this is uh something that is currently in development and when we talk about things that are currently in development you may want to also take a look at some of these other things there's an update to reference space once you're working with mixed reality so there's an improvement currently for mixed reality users and at the same time there is also a new pose library that is based off the asset browser and just in case you might want to see a full video about this one keep your eye peeled on the notification so that you can see once that video drops and moving forward there is also a couple new updates that is currently within the geometry nodes and right now we have the set bezier handle type node that is currently available for geometry nodes so over time we've seen a couple of updates come over to the geometry nodes but of course this is very interesting as right now you can easily set the bezier handle of a given node depending on what you like to achieve with that and while we talk about the geometry nodes, there is a new production lesson for the hairspray effect with geometry node that was created for the sprite fright. So for those who like to take a look at this, maybe you want to see how the hairspray was sort of made. You want to see all of the ideas that came up together to building this from the animator's pitch all the way to the final rendering. Then this is also a very good one for you to take a look at as these would definitely explain small steps that was taken by Simon to actually get this effect up and running. And it's very interesting to see that the geometry 
node is now heavily being used for production for the Sprite Fright. It's also worth mentioning that the Sprite Fright weeklies is now available to the public. At the end of every week, the Blender team, they gather together and they talk about what and what they achieve within the week. And this time they've been recording every single thing from the beginning to the present state of the production. So right now you might want to come through and see how, you know, the progress of the Sprite Fright animation has been. And this is definitely interesting. So they're sharing this stuff so that you can enjoy the journey and also see the progress and get some heavy spoilers. Just in case you don't want to get spoilers, you may want to skip this one. But of course, if you like to learn certain things that was taken into action and uh, certain things that was considered for making several decisions within the Sprite Fight animation itself or for the Sprite Fight animation itself, then this is something that might be of importance to you. Moving on, let's talk about some community stuff. Renderman 24.1 is now here and this caters to some of the bugs that we've actually experienced previously. And one cool thing with this new update is it is also available for Blender 2.93. So it actually makes it even more accessible for those working with Blender 2.93 as if you're using that particular variant of Blender, you can now download and work with Renderman. So for those working with Windows, there's a walkthrough on how you can get these things to work. And you can also find this as I'm going to put a link to this in the description. And of course, if you would like to read more on the update and also see certain things that were fixed, check out the box and see if you were experiencing any of this. I'm also going to put this link in the description so that you can see it. And while we talk about Renderman, there is an art and science fair coming up. So the art and science fair is going to be taking place on August the 3rd and also the 4th of this year. So in case you have questions, you want to see Renderman in action, you want to join any of these events that deals with Renderman. Actually, there is an event that is tagged Renderman and Blender. So you might have some questions. You might want to hear from the artists, creators, and also the developers. Links is also going to be in the description. So you can register for this. Registration is free. All you need to do is go over to this link, register, and then you will be in the knowing once this is ready. So with that said, let's talk about some more community stuff that you guys would love to take a look at. So Raul does have a couple of free stuff. So for those looking for ultimate concrete shader, or maybe you're looking for free tune shaders. Raul does have a kamikaze shader that he's given the light version for free. There is also another cool font type that he's also given out for free. And for those who like to 3D print Suzanne, there is a very cool Suzanne figurine. A huge shout out to Laura for making this one possible. And it makes a lot of sense to also consider the fact that there is a brand new grid breaker. So this is currently in its pre-alpha. So in case you want to check this one out, you might want to also go over to Andre's page. Most of the stuff that he has here are quite nice. You might also want to come through and check out cool USB as he has also created a very free add-on that deals with part actions. So this is also a very nice one. So depending on how you like to organize and also work with your parts while working in Blender, you might see some of the things that he has made here very cool. He also has a couple of add-ons as these tools might help you save time depending on what you're doing with Blender. It also makes sense to look at a very cool shader tree that is now available made by Crazy Pixel School. So this one is a Caustic Ocean Node tree. It actually just gives you that caustic sort of feel. So in case you want to get this, this one is for free. If you go over to his page, you might also notice that there is a halftone node tree as well. So depending on what you like to make, if you like making comic characters or comic stuff, you might also love taking a look at this shader as this might also come in very, very handy. Something else that can come in very handy is an add-on that we talked about within the week known as EV Production Suite. So this is a top-down tool that you really need if you're working with EV. So from setting up different kinds of lighting studio, setting up different kinds of procedural materials, all the way to material nodes and, you know, shaders that you can take advantage of the EV production suit is right here to cater for all of your needs right now they're talking about making some extended shaders that you can work with as they've just added a brand new procedural landscape shader so just in case you're into this you might consider checking this one out the updates for the vegetation is right here so the vegetation version 4 has just been released we're yet to talk about it but it is now here so for those who already own the vegetation tool or maybe you're thinking about getting a vegetation tool that can help you populate your scenes with cool vegetation this is currently at 20 percent off so just in case you would like to check it out you can proceed to see these things for yourself and that's about it i'd like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section and for those who like to get any of these things that we've just talked about link to this is going to be in the description and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update and i'd like to see you guys again with the tutorial update free friday tutorial tuesday tips and tricks things like this peace